Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in the JE Advanced Solutions series and this is as I call it alpha and omega of your preparation that is the starting and ending of your preparation for JE Advanced. No preparation of any as JE aspirant is complete uh, until unless he or she has completed the at least last 10 to 15 years of question papers in the reverse order. So this is one of my attempts to uh, acclimatize you to the situations that are uh, given to st uh, students in the exam and the kind of language, the challenges that are thrown at them, and also a way to uh, familiarize students with the kind of visualization there it is needed in the exam to crack questions. Okay, so let's move ahead. So this is going to be a question on electric flux that was asked in JE paper 2015. Okay, so here's the formal wording in case you are new and you want to have a fair try, just read the question on your own. The picture associated with the question in the paper is on the right side and um, give it a try for two or three minutes and then do come back for the concept explanation and also the solution. And please do watch the video till the end in case uh, you have already done this question. I'll be providing you with uh, four to five practice problems on similar flux symmetry and uh, electric and magnetic flux calculations. Okay, so let's move ahead. An infinitely long uniform line charge distribution of charge per unit length lambda lies parallel to the y axis in the yz plane at z is equal to root 3 a by 2. Okay, so if the magnitude of the electric flux of the electric field uh, through the rectangular surface ABCD lying in the xy plane with its center at origin is lambda L by N epsilon not where epsilon not is permittivity of free space, then the value of N in this expression is. Okay, so this was a question of integer value as the answer. So you're supposed to get to that integer. Okay, so let's start with the concept by um, going through a standard example that is solved by many JE aspirants. So this is not the actual question. So I have I'm going to touch upon this concept using the standard example. A lot of things are on the screen. Just follow my lead instead of reading things on your own. Okay. So here's a question that you're all mostly familiar with where a point charge is placed on a cubical Gaussian surface, corner of it, and you're supposed to calculate what is the flux associated with the shaded region, one of the faces which is not touching. You can almost divide the six faces of this Gaussian cube into two types. One, the touching face, the ones that touch the charge and non-touching ones which are away from the charge. Okay, so this shaded one is the non-touching face. So in order to understand this particular problem, uh, we could actually first of all calculate what is the flux associated with all six faces or the entire cube surface. Okay, for that we can transport ourselves into another uh, hypothetical world in which a charge is placed exactly at the center of a bigger cube made out of uh, smaller eight such cubes that are there on the left. Okay, so you could think of that as a cube of side 2a. Okay, now the one at the center treats each of these smaller cubes as a uh, charge which is at the corner of that. Okay, so since the total flux is q by epsilon naught, each of these smaller cubes will take up the one eighth of that flux. We all know that. So we can also argue that one eighth of this particular charge is present inside this cube. Okay, so the fraction of that charge present inside this cube is equal to uh, one eighth. Okay, so how do you visualize this? Think of the charge as a sphere and that sphere's radius is shrinking to zero. It's like a limit that we use in mathematics. Okay, limit of that radius trending to zero. At any point when this limit actually tends to zero, the fraction of the charge that is there inside any of these smaller cubes is going to remain as one by eight. It doesn't depend on the size. So independent of the size of this cube, once the point charge is placed and you can visualize the point charge as a sphere whose radius is shrinking to zero, we could say the flux associated with this entire total six surfaces is one eighth of Q by epsilon naught. Now you can say that three times the flux of the touching phases, which is zero, right? All these touching phases, the field lines from this charge 
graze those surfaces, right? The bottom floor, the frontal face, and this left side wall, the feed lines will be parallel to that surface. So the flux will be as equal to zero. And the other three surfaces due to symmetry would be equivalent to this flux of the shaded surface. So this one and the right side wall and the ceiling, all the three surfaces individually are treated in a similar manner by this particular charge. Therefore, I can uh, boldly write this as three times of phi shaded, which is equal to Q by eight epsilon naught. And by symmetry, you end up getting the flux of this shaded region comes out to be Q by 24 epsilon naught. So here, uh, the, the limiting idea of ensuring that a point charge is made into a sphere and then the radius is tending to zero. And as this radius tends to zero, we have to always check whether the uh, fraction is determinate or not. So. Will this uh, method always work? No, it doesn't. Whenever you have a point charge on the periphery of a Gaussian surface, it will not always work. Okay, so here we could determine that the fraction is always one by eight when the shrinking happens. Let's take a simple example in which it doesn't work. So when can you not use this? I'm taking an example of a point charge on the surface of a Gaussian sphere. Okay, so this green colored stuff is a Gaussian surface, uh, which is a sphere. And there's a point charge that I'm supposed to place on the periphery. So the actual problem is on the right side of your screen. The actual point charge is here. And imagine someone asks you what is the flux associated with this Gaussian surface? Then the answer, it cannot be determinate. Okay, so the idea is think of that point charge to be a big sphere. And gradually as the mathematical limit tends to zero, you need to ascertain whether the fraction of the charge inside is a determinate value or not. You could clearly see that as you shrink this charge, the different values of the fraction stay inside because this surface is not a determinate surface, a curvilinear surface cutting another curvilinear spherical charge is not going to produce a uh, uh, determinate fraction. The fraction here and the fraction here and the fraction here and finally the fraction here are going to depend on the ratio of the radii of the charge that you've taken and the Gaussian surface. Okay, so until unless this charge, uh, this Gaussian surface becomes a flat plane, you cannot say that half of the charge is inside. Okay, so as the radius tends to zero, the fraction of charge inside the sphere changes. So the flux due to a point charge on the hollow sphere is indeterminate. So you have both sides of the coin here. The way we use this shrinking limiting method, it can be done to flat surfaces or the determinate surfaces, but we cannot use it in this manner. Okay, so does the IITJ problem fall under the determinate case and how do you manipulate that? Here's the solution, okay? So again, a lot of things on the board, just follow my lead. The left side, I have drawn the question paper uh, view of the diagram that he has provided, um, even though I have shaded some of the important regions here. This ABCD, the plane through which the flux is being asked, and also the charge, uh, line charge, that lambda that he has given, infinitely long wire, I have drawn in blue. Okay, in order to complete the Gaussian surface, because this single plane can't form a Gaussian surface, I need a closed surface. I am trying to complete a prism here. Okay, so you can you see there is a triangular prism that I am completing with a rectangular base. Okay, so if this prism is completed, now try to visualize the flux associated with each of the faces. How many faces are there? The Right. Just imagine you are this person watching this prism from this side, okay? Right, he will see the frontal triangle face. There is a backside triangle face and um, there is a rectangular face, which is a slant one like this. And there is another rectangular face, which is slant on the other side. All these faces that I spoke of will have field lines coming out from this blue color lambda line charge, grazing them, right? So. Just imagine the feed line just grazes this plane. It grazes this frontal triangular plane. It also grazes the behind, okay? So out of all these five faces, only the flux would be associated with this shaded region that he has asked in the question paper. So I can argue that the flux associated with all five faces is equal to the flux associated with ABCD. Now, what does this fellow's view look like? This fellow, when he's watching from this side, he will be just concentrated on the right side of the screen. He would be seeing a triangular face 
and this line charge i am now imagining it to be a cylinder whose radius is shrinking to zero shrinking to zero limiting to zero so how much would be the a fraction of that line charge or cylinder that would be inside this triangle okay in this particular view with this distance is given as root 3a by 2 and this base length given as a you can quickly associate the angle uh, given by this uh, triangle as 60 degrees at this particular place okay so once you know that this is 60 degree triangle then this entire cylinder would be having only one sixth of the charge inside this uh, particular uh, triangle okay so this is root 3 a by 2 and this is given is a therefore if this has root 3 a by 2 and this has a by 2 that uh, angle should be equal to 30 degrees and 30 degrees on this side so total is 60. so the angle enclosed by the rod would be 60 degrees inside this prism and therefore electric flux associated is the one sixth of the total flux that will leave out of it which is lambda l by epsilon naught the lambda l is the charge of only this much part okay so the required answer therefore comes out to be six okay so we can go back and mark the answer that should come out to be six okay right so once we are done with this let's move ahead for some practice problems which i will uh, give you the solutions for in the upcoming aats select series okay so there are five of them so patiently try to take snapshots of this and try them out okay so th some of them are going to be now cakewalks for you with this concept that i have already told you and some of them are slightly more difficult than what i have given in the je advanced problem okay so this is the first one electric flux here's the second one this is a very famous one has appeared in one of the school olympiads okay there's a point charge which is taken very close but it doesn't sit on the corner okay so just outside okay and along the body diagonal it's going to ask what is the flux associated with a b c d okay right again electric flux the third one this is an extension of the concept uh, of whatever we have learned uh, in this particular video and also a concept of uh, associating the flux with the force which i have done in quite a few number of videos in case you want to have a uh, try uh, of those videos just go to the playlist and try to check for the electric flux playlist okay electrostatics part three where electric flux playlist you'll find two or three problems on this particular model so try this one out i'll come up with a solution and then the fourth one slightly different i know we have been doing electric flux but the idea of flux calculations are similar in both the contexts okay so it's slightly different but then you'll be finding some similarities in this concept also in the magnetic flux idea so it's a very good question i like this question a lot some of you might have done this uh, but just giving it a fair try and you'll learn something here okay and the last one slightly cunning question which you need to work out from the options. Uh, once you look at the options, it would be very, very clear and simple. Okay, so these are the five problems. I'll come up with the solutions in the upcoming AITS Select Series videos. Okay, so I hope you have liked the presentation of this particular question. I'll come up with more and more solutions as the exam comes nearby. My idea is to, our goal is in the next one and a half to two months, I have to complete all the ambiguous and tough questions of the last 10 years, JE Advanced, uh, paper one and paper two question papers okay so apart from that there are multiple series running parallelly in this channel helping out students like pathfinder solutions olympiad workout series ats select series and resolve series and many more so please do uh, go down in the description and find the links of the playlist and try to play two or three videos per day if you are new and try to catch up we have already produced more than 170 videos on this channel okay so catching up before your actual je examination is a worthwhile thing to do okay so please do like this particular video and try to share it with your peer groups uh, in the relevant telegram and whatsapp study groups of yours and in case you are new please do subscribe to my channel and request your friends also to come and subscribe ask them to watch two or three uh, videos the latest ones and they would definitely um, more lean towards subscribing than just leaving the channel okay so that kind of confidence I have got because of the love and support that you have been giving me uh, in the comment section so please do continue to do the same and see you in the next video